the first time I walk in a man to go be I go to jail. And this, the, the, the other times when I go to jail was for ganja. I mean not smoke ganja, never yet smoke ganja. I go drink ganja. I go to jail for ganja three times. You know, and that was something else. Alan O. Bar 1952, better known as Muta Baruka, is a Jamaican Rastafari dub poet, musician, actor, educator, and talk show host who developed two of Jamaica's most popular radio programs, The Cutting Edge and The Stepping Razor. Listen to me, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me, because we now go through this again. You know. Life cannot die. All right. Life does not belong to individuals, okay. but individuals possess a life energy mm -hmm. that makes them different from, makes them individuals. Oh, no. His name comes from the Rwandan language and translates as one who is always victorious. His themes include politics, culture, black liberation, social expression, discrimination, poverty, racism, sexism, and religion. The early life and education of Muta Baruka. Muta Baruka was born and raised in Raytown, Kingston, Jamaica, in a household with his father, mother and two sisters. When he was eight years old, his father died. Muta Baruka attended the Kingston Technical High School, where he trained in electronics for four years, going on to work for the Jamaica Telephone Company until eventually quitting in 1971. The sound that is not my name. Mr. Brown, Mr. White, that's not right. Lord. And if we... Muta Baruka was drawn into the black awareness movement of the late 1960s and early 70s. In school, he read many progressive books, including Helgridge Clever's Soul and Heist and others that were then illegal in Jamaica, such as the autobiography of Malcolm X. Raised as a Roman Catholic, he began examining and immersing himself in the Rastafari movement. I'm glad for that because my, my main thing about ganja in Jamaica is not like, I don't think it's like most rastas. But they matter about sacrament and, you know, make money and fight and so My main thing in Jamaica was to see that rasta that smoke him or without go to jail. He stopped combing his hair and started growing dreadlocks, changed to an ital diet and even stopped wearing shoes as he became a Rastafari. Muta Baruka musical career from 1971 to 2000. Muta Baruka left Kingston in 1971, relocating to the Potosi Hills, where he lived with his wife and two children in a house that he built himself. He was among the new wave of Jamaican poets that emerged in the early 1970s. This poem shall speak of the wretched sea that watch ships to these shores, of mothers crying for their young swallowed up by the sea. This poem shall say nothing new. This poem shall speak of time, time unlimited, time undefined. This poem shall call names, names like Lomumba, Kenyatta, Nkuma, Hannibal, Acneton, Malcolm, Garvey, Haile Selassie. This poem is vexed about apartheid, racism, fascism, the Ku Klux Klan, riots in Brixton, Atlanta, Jim Jones. Early work by Muta Baruka was first presented in the magazine Swing from 1971, introducing Old Cry, March 1973. In 1977, he began performing live, backed by his band Throat. He had a hit record in Jamaica the following year with Old Cry, backed by Cedric Brooks, the light of Saba. After being invited to perform at a Jimmy Cliff concert in the early 1980s, guitarist Earl Chino Smith worked on a background track for Every Time I Hear the Sound. Beginning a long work relationship with Smith, released as a single, it was a hit in Jamaica. He became known internationally after his performance at Reggae Sun Splash in 1981, the first of several performances at the festival. 
his 1983 release check it was released on Chicago blues label Alligator Records and further increased its popularity. He created the 1983 completion album Word Sound Have Power released by Artbeat Records and in 1984 Sanachi Records released his album The Mystery Unfolds. He went on to record collaborations with the both Gregory Isaacs and Dennis Brown on Hard Road to Travel and Great Kings of Africa respectively. He continued to record and perform and in the mid 1990s began presenting a late night talk show on the radio station IRFM called The Cutting Edge and quickly became one of Jamaica's most sought after and controversial radio personalities. In 1990, Muta Baruka's poem, This Poem, from his album The Mystery Alfolds, Sanish Records, 1986, was used as the a cappella introduction of the poem, a song by house music and dancehall reggae artist and producer Bobby Kenders, which brought his work to a wider audience. This poem shall speak of the wretched sea that washed ships to these shores, of mothers crying for their young swallowed up by the sea. This poem shall say nothing new. This poem shall speak of time, time unlimited, time undefined. This poem shall call names, names like Lomumba, Kenyatta, Nkuma, Hannibal, Acneton, Malcolm, Garvey, Haile Selassie. This poem is vexed about apartheid, racism, fascism, the Ku Klux Klan, riots in Brixton, Atlanta, Jim Jones. The poem was released on New Groove Records in 1990. He performed on the side edge for parts of the 1993 Lepolosia Music Festival. He had further hits in the later half of the 1990s, including Wise Up with Sugar Minot and Psalms 24 with Luciana. In 2001, he served as narrator for filmmaker Stephanie Black's Life and Depth and a documentary about the impact of global economy, policy and the IMF on the economy and people of Jamaica. The title son Life and Depth was released on Muta Baruka's 2002 album Life Squared. In 2007, he taught African American studies at Merritt College in California. He has lectured and performed at many establishments in Jamaica and the United States. In 2000, Muta Baruka was featured as part of the Jamaica episode of the television program Anthony Burden No Reservation. In February 2010, Muta Baruka was honored by the National Center for Youth Development NCYD, and the Richard Club of Mandeville for over 30 years of outstanding work in the field of the arts. Later on in 2010, he was recognized by Senegal with a hut built in his honor. In September 2010, he recited a tribute poem in honor of Lucky Dubé, whose music he said sought to liberate the oppressed. In August 2011, Muta Baruka spoke at the first Jamaica Poetry Festival in honor of Marcus Garvey and Louis Bennett. On the final day of the Rastafarian Studies Conference, professors of, professors of the West Indies described Muta Baruka as an icon. His outspoken statements on theology and the oppressive roles played by a religious institution have generated much controversy. Although he is a non-smoker, Muta Baruka has campaigned for the decriminalization of cannabis. In 2016, the government of Jamaica awarded Muta Baruka the Order of Distinction, Commander Class, one of the highest distinction in the country, in recognition of his culture contributions. The sound that is not my name. Mr. Brown, Mr. White, that's not right. Lord, and every time I hear the sound, 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 the sound, the sound, the sound. I in a dance, I jump on a branch, rocking every dog instead of the dance, I'll count and the bus start. And every time I hear the sound, 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 the
and the Americans, all of them have a plan how to free be the Africans. Man, what a confusion. Love. And every